This presentation will demonstrate the appropriate technique for the fixation of a transverse mandibular symphysis fracture using two 2.0 mandible mini plates. The method provides stable fixation by adaptation, relying on the bony buttressing of the fracture. It's technically easy, but is not as stable as lag screws or compression plating. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the importance of correct occlusion and anatomical reduction to reproduce the original shape of the mandible before fracture fixation has begun and the correct technique for applying two 2.0 mandible mini plates. Here is the clinical situation. Pre-operative radiographs are needed in two planes, usually an OPT and a PA mandible. CT scans may also be used. The standard approach for fractures of the symphysial region is intraoral. The instruments needed are two bending pliers, the reduction forceps, the holding forceps with ball tip, the 1.5 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop, and the 1.5 2.0 cruciform screwdriver shaft with handle. Before open reduction and fixation in the dentate patient, the correct occlusion must be re-established. For this exercise, Ernst ligatures have been selected to hold the occlusion. However, it should be noted that many surgeons prefer MMF with arch bars because of the increased stability. The model requires two monocortical holes to be drilled at the superior border on either side of the fracture to help when placing the reduction forceps. In the clinical situation, caution should be taken not to harm the tooth roots. The mandible halves are manipulated until anatomic reduction is achieved. This fracture is to be repaired with the two-plate technique. The first four-hole 2.0 mandible mini plate is applied to the inferior border of the mandible. The plate is contoured with the bending pliers. The plate is positioned a few millimeters superior to the inferior border. On the bone model, the holding forceps with ball tip is used. A 1.5 millimeter drill bit with 6 millimeter stop is used to drill monocortically through the plate hole next to the fracture. A 2 mm screw, 6 mm in length, is inserted. It is not fully tightened until the final reduction and plate position are confirmed. A second screw is inserted on the other side of the fracture in the same way. Both screws are tightened. The forceps is removed and the remaining plate holes are filled. Now a second 2.0 mandible mini plate is used. This plate is placed under the tooth roots to avoid damage. The reduction forceps is removed. It must be confirmed that the reduction is adequate and fixation is complete and that no gapping exists on the lingual aspect that would lead to occlusal disturbance and mandibular widening. After plate osteosynthesis with two plates in isolated median and paramedian fractures, no MMF is needed. However, it is recommended that the patient stay on a soft diet for four weeks. The mandible is now stable, and limited function is allowed. This exercise has shown the importance of correct occlusion and anatomical reduction to reproduce the original shape of the mandible before the fracture is fixed, and the correct technique for applying the two 2.0 mandible mini plates. With this method, fixation is stable and technically easy 
but it is not as stable as lag screws and compression plating.